case, is just typing over here a function but with parameters. For example, you might be teaching um, turning point form of quadratic equations or parabola and you type y equals a bracket. Notice it starts to graph what you've got. Uh, x minus b bracket, the caret symbol for squared, arrow across to get down, plus c. Notice that it's suggesting it adds sliders for those three parameters. You can click individually or I just click all and there we go. And it set them all at one. So pretty easily, if I want to change a, we increase it, you can see it affects the width of the parabola when it goes negative and so forth. So that's very powerful. B the same, the horizontal shift. And when it's 4, that's where the turning point is, the x-coordinate. C, the up or down. You can see C is 2 and there we are. You can also plot points just by typing a bracket. Excuse me, shift bracket. And the turning point should be B, comma, C. Press enter. And then there's a turning point over here. You can see the turning point. If I drag that around, you can see that the sliders then change. So if I drag it to minus 2, comma, minus 4, or pretty close, you can see that's where the sliders are as well. You can also adjust the sliders by set increments just by clicking on one of the extremities and saying, look, I only want it to go from negative 5 to 5, whatever, and click away. Then by dragging it, it will go from negative 5 to 5. I didn't alter the step, so I'll click on the extremity again. The step might want to go in 1. And click away, and now it'll just go in 1s. And you can do the same for the other sliders. Another function that's a little bit uh, counterintuitive, but sort of makes sense when you see it, is how to restrict the domain. Basically, you have to multiply the whole function. I'll just put brackets around the entire function. Notice it put in the right-hand bracket for me. And I'll just multiply it by curly brackets. Don't have to put the multiplied symbol in. Uh, say um, 1 is less than x, which is less than 3. Put in the curly, other curly brackets put in at the right. You can see there it is. It's restricted the domain from 1 to 3. If you want to restrict the y domain, it's the same sort of thing. You can go perhaps um, negative 1 is less than y, which is less than, actually I'll make it uh, a smaller one, negative 2, to negative 1, and scroll down here, and I'll just click in, you can see I restricted the y domain. I've had to take a break, so sorry about that. You'll notice a few things have changed in the meantime. I've widened this window here just by clicking and dragging so I can see more of the equations. And I've adjusted the sliders so that they change in increments of 1. And I also removed the brackets here. I didn't need brackets around the entire equation when I put in these domain and range constraints. So that's something else I just learnt. Also I can put a label in with this point and it labels the coordinates there. However, I'm going to hide that graph by clicking the colour off in this point and show you a trig graph. The same sliders, so I can alter the amplitude, I can alter B, the period, and I can alter C, where it starts from. I can move over here and use the mouse wheel to scroll to zoom in, or click and drag to change the coordinate system, origin placement, there's quite a lot you can do with Desmos. I think I might end this one here and um, perhaps make some others, for example, how to generate tables of values in another video. In the meantime, thanks for watching.